What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about one trade that I made today on the 11th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today. And trust me guys, there were a bunch, a bunch of stocks today that did very well. And we're also gonna be looking at some that I potentially want to trade here over these next couple of days but before we do get into the topic of today's video for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content here on youtube feel free to go down below and hit that like button guys it really does support the channel and supports me in general and if you're new to the community you're new to my channel here feel free to go down below if you want to stay further connected with our community two links are down below the free discord group chat as well as the free Facebook group. You'll find a ton, a ton, a ton of value in there if you want to learn more about trading, stocks, investing, and just want to be a part of, you know, a very helpful, you know, integrated community. Again, all of those links are down below in the description box. So like I said, guys, a bunch of stocks did very well today. And you can tell here by the SPX, the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, they did absolutely amazing today, right? The SPX was up about 1.47% at the close, up about $40 on the day. The Dow Jones today, guys, up about 200 points, up about 0.8% on the day, and the NASDAQ did the best out of them all today, guys. We can see it's up around $4 here, up about 0.06%, but this is for after hours because these are the futures, but if we take a look here, you know, on the one day, one minute, we can see the move that we made today, guys, from about 70, 75 all the way up to, let's see, what where did we close at? I believe it was at around, what was it, like 71.90? We can see a move of about 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7% 1 in the NASDAQ, up about, let's say, 100, let's see, about 110, 120 points in terms of the NASDAQ from the open to the close of the market. And this was heavily due to a bunch of tech stocks, including Apple and Facebook, that we called out and talked Talked about in yesterday's video doing very well as well as Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, all of them had a fantastic day and the NASDAQ is obviously a very tech heavy index and we're going to be diving into those charts in, in terms of these tech stocks in a couple of minutes here so stay tuned here. And let's start off this video like we always do, guys, talking about the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. Company. So for all you guys that have been following the channel for a while now, you know that we've been identifying multiple indications that or indicators rather that the SPX and the entire market was selling off, right? We called out the double top. We called out the break below the channel here on the 30 day 90 minute chart. We called out the break below the 50 SMA, the EMA, and then the 180 SMA a couple of days ago. But today, guys, we actually got a very clear bounce here on the 180 SMA on this 30 day 90 minute chart after we dipped below it a little bit on the previous trading day and we can clearly see you know we're popping up here we're breaking above the 50 SMA we broke above the EMA line everything is pointing to an uptrend reversal now that we're really just continuing that uptrend that we've been on this whole 2019 here that we can clearly see on this 2000 or rather this 180 80 four hour chart. So what did we talk about in the previous video? We were talking about what did we want to see? We wanted to see whether or not the SPX was going to break out of this resistance at about 2740. And we can clearly see guys, we had no problem of doing that. We also talked about breaking out of the 50 SMA. We had no problem in doing that as well. So at this point, we're back at that 2785, 2790 resistance that we were at a couple of weeks ago, really last week and a little bit the week before, where we have difficulty breaking into the 2800 level, the 20. 2810 to 2815 level and that is what I'm really going to be looking for for the rest of this week and heading on for the rest of this month guys this month guys I had a little tongue twister there but 
Are we going to get back into that $2,800 level? We're obviously going to be testing the $2,790 level here in the next coming days. If we do end up pulling back tomorrow or the next day, you know, we might be heading towards this 50 SMA support level if we do end up pulling back. But still, I'm going to be watching that pump up to the 2790 resistance and to see whether or not we're going to break above it, hold it as a new support, and continue this uptrend and ultimately break out of the 2815 resistance that we topped off. Really, we saw a double top there a couple of weeks ago. You know, we struggled to get out of there. So this is something that I'm very interested in seeing. And if we clearly, uh, quickly clear this drawing set, and I draw a new trend line here for you guys, we can see, you know, this is what we're looking at in terms of the SPX here. And the fact that we're holding a higher low from the previous low at about 2690, 2700, this determines that we're still uptrending, we're still pushing up. And on a broad basis here, on an overall, you know, 180 analysis of the SPX, we're still uptrending, we are still pushing up up but let's say tomorrow you know we end up selling off let's say we get rejected by the 2790 uh you know level resistance and we start to push down you know that might be a different story because from there if we start to push down over the next couple of days and then we end up breaking this level and start to test you know 2700 which a lot of people in the youtube community a lot of investors in general have been saying the 2700 flat level for the spx is a very very critical spot and it really is a critical spot you know if that does end up happening this could be a sign that we're selling off and at that point this is going to look like a head and shoulders pattern right the left shoulder the head and then the right shoulder which is something that we called out really not called out because it didn't quite happen yet but we talked about that you know, over the past couple of videos that this could be a potential pattern forming if we do end up getting rejected here and slowly start to sell off. Do you guys understand and see what I'm saying here? The left, the head, then the right, and then if we do end up pushing down here, you know, that would be a full completion of that pattern and we could continue to sell off potentially from there in terms of the SPX, the S&P 500. So let's take a look now at the Dow Jones. You know, unlike the SPX where we broke out of that 50 SMA resistance here on the 180, the Dow Jones is still really trending below that resistance, the 50 SMA resistance. But the good thing that we do see here is that we broke out of that other resistance that we were talking about and looking at in the previous video, which was at about $25,400. And the interesting thing with Dow Jones today, guys, was that we had a ridiculous swing. If you guys recall, this morning, I believe the futures were down nearly 200 points in terms of the Dow Jones. Then we ended up swinging up 200 at the close, meaning we had a 400-point swing today in the Dow Jones. And let me explain why this happened. For those of you guys that have been paying attention to the news in general, you saw that Boeing, one of the biggest companies in the Dow 30, in the Dow Jones, actually dropped a ton today, about 12%, I believe, 10, 11, 12% today. And this is because one of their 737 planes crashed, and this is actually the second plane that has crashed in a six month span. It actually ended up killing, I believe, 157 people, if I'm remembering right off the top of my head right now, about 149 passengers and eight crew members ended up dying. It was an Ethiopian flight. I believe it was an, uh, were they flying out of Africa into Africa? Something like that. The plane ended up actually, no, I think they were flying out of Africa. The plane ended up crashing, you know, within an hour right after takeoff or something like that. Everybody ended up dying, you know, tragic, tragic news, really very, very tragic. And this ended up dropping Boeing stock, which in turn ended up dropping the Dow Jones heavily this morning. And the fact that we, you know, let's see if we can actually see it here. The gap down, right? We can see the gap down from 25 all the way down, 25,400 all the way down to 25,200. And then we had that 400 point swing. So this gap down actually put us below this resistance that we're talking about here at about 25,400. So in the morning, you could have said, okay, we're getting rejected here. 
by this resistance. We're pushing down in the Dow Jones, but then we had that big swing pushing us out of that resistance, and now we're under the 50 SMA, and we're looking to hold that old resistance that we broke out of this morning as a new support level. So that's exactly what I'm going to be ending, uh, you know, end up, uh, you know, looking for tomorrow is whether or not we're going to maintain this level as a new support and then slowly start to fill the gap back up to the next resistance, which in this case is at about $25,900. If we test this level in the next couple of days and we end up breaking out of that level, you know, we could be testing those highs that we saw a couple of weeks back at about 26,200, which happens to be the next resistance, which is here at 26,200, where we topped off back in the beginning of November in 2018. So keep an eye on those levels, guys. But again, you know, if we clear this drawing set very quickly, we can see... You know, we're maintaining the uptrend here on the longer term basis on the 184 hour chart. The higher low has been made from the previous low at about 25,000 flat. The low here was at about 25,200. These are very good signs that we're maintaining the uptrend. So that's what the Dow is looking like right now, guys. I want to see the breakout of there. The big, big dip in the Boeing stock really caused the Dow Jones to drop pretty heavily this morning, but we saw a very, very nice recovery here. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, this one had a ridiculous day. Again, like I said, the tech stocks today, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, they all did absolutely amazing. So we talked about the potential hold, or actually, I think it did end up holding this 180 SMA when I recorded my last market update video this past Friday. We talked about this being a new potential support level, and the fact that we did end up holding this is a very good sign that we're continuing the uptrend in the NASDAQ. And we can see here today, guys, with the big, big move that we saw, we ended up breaking the resistance here at about 7,100, and now we're testing the next resistance at about 7,200. So very big moves today in the NASDAQ, guys. Very big move. We ended up breaking through two critical resistances, one being the 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, the next one being the 7150 level I just talked about. And now tomorrow, what I'm going to be waiting for, as you guys could probably tell, is a potential break above the $7,200 level and for it to hold that resistance as a new support to potentially push even higher and continue this uptrend push to test the next resistance, which now it's looking like we have to finally draw this one out because we're testing this resistance here, which is going to be at about $7,300 and 66, uh, you know, 7366 right around here, which we ended up topping off at in the middle of October in 2018. So very, very strong move here, guys. Very strong move. Honestly, you know, you would probably think that you know, we're due for a pullback here due to these large, big green candlesticks, right? We could potentially pull back. And if we do pull back, look for the hold on this support and a, and a potential trend, you know, in this horizontal pattern here, maybe for a couple of days before eventually popping out. And if we do pop out again, that's going to be the continuation of the uptrend. That is what we want to see you know, in terms of the NASDAQ. So overall today, guys, again, very strong green day, very, very strong green day. A bunch of stocks ended up doing very well. And for those of you guys that actually watched my video that I uploaded previously today, about three stocks I'm looking to swing trade, take a look at that if you have not yet watched it. Maybe watch it after you watch this video. There's going to be some key insights there on what I'm personally looking to trade. So make sure you go check that out. I'm going to be talking about some other stocks in this video. I'm not really going to be mentioning those three that I talked about in that video because I want you guys to go check that out. It's a shorter video, but let's talk about now what I ended up trading today. And you guys probably can tell if you guys were in the uh, Discord group chat this morning, I talked about trading Boeing stock. Boeing stock, like I said, guys, it tanked today on that news of the Ethiopian flight crashing. Again, the second 737 flight that ended up crashing in a six-month window. Window, very, very tragic, very, very tragic. 
and the stock fell from a matter of, I think it was like 425 or something. We talked about it on Sunday's video and yesterday's video as a potential entry point here, but thankfully we didn't get in. I didn't get in. I'm sure a lot of people did get in. If you did get in, you probably got burned. I am sorry, but we ended up dropping, like I said, to about, uh, I think like 360 or something like that. And if we take a look here, on the one day minute or one day one minute, we had a very nice fill, not a complete fill to the top here at about 423, but we had a very nice, you know, push from 365 all the way up to about 400 dollars. And the really honestly, guys, I got in roughly at about I think it was like 375 this morning when I saw this big reversal pattern starting to you know form, right? And really, the first thing that I saw you know, that really pointed to me that, okay, we could be reversing to the upside here. Is this double bottom at about $370? We ended up dipping down to 365 but once we did pop up back into the 370 level, that really confirmed this double bottom here. And for those of you guys that don't know, a double bottom is a reversal pattern that we like to look for for a stock to push to the upside, just like a double top is a, a pattern, a reversal pattern for a stock to push to the downside, like we saw in the SPX a couple weeks ago, or really last week. This is what you can use for you know a stock stocks reversal to the upside, but we just have to view it, you know, on, on the double bottom basis, right? And if you mirror this image to the upside, it would be a double top, right? And we can see it would push it, right? It would push to the downside, but, but that's besides the point. We see this double bottom here, like I said, and this ended up pushing up. Once we start to push up out of the resistance at about 375, that is when I ended up taking a position in Boeing stock. And I ended up just riding it up 2%, really, I know you guys that have been watching for a while, you know that I typically take about 1% to 2% profits on my day trades just to play it safe, and that's what I ended up doing today in Boeing stock, right? I got in here, ended up riding it up about 1%, 2%, no, it was 2%, riding it up to about $385, and that was it, guys, but let's say if I ended up holding it throughout the entire day, I could have made roughly 7% on my money, roughly about 6-7% if I held to the peak here. But, you know, it's all about taking a conservative approach, in my personal opinion, with my personal style. This way you can be more consistent, right? Because if you try to aim for the home run trade every time, meaning you want to grab as much profit as possible, you want to be greedy, 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 you know, you're going to get bit in the butt a lot. And this is something that I talk more in depth on in my 90% of traders fail video, right? Being too greedy will come and bite you, which is why I like to be very conservative. I like to take my profits when they're on the board at about 1%, 2% on day trades. And when I'm swinging trading it's a different story right when i'm looking to trade a stock hold it for a month or two you know i like to grab maybe five maybe ten percent at some points in certain stocks that i'm swing trading so Boeing guys, very, very strong move here, very strong move, and this is actually one that I'm watching tomorrow for another potential move. Maybe we do end up filling back up to about $415, and if we take a look on the 20-day one hour, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? This gap down from 422 down to about 365, we filled about half the way there at about $400, and let's say we end up holding $400 as a new support tomorrow and we start to fill back up we can move from four hundred dollars back up to about uh you know 415 for a potential 3.5 percent move and this is a lesson that we can all take when looking at boeing stock right when things happen like a tragedy with this plane crash let's say an earnings report right? A miss, an earnings report, some news that comes out that's tr really drastic. People overreact sometimes, right? Investors, they sell their shares. People sell, they panic. There's a lot of overreaction, which opens up a huge margin of profit, which is what we as traders look to capitalize on, right? We saw the overreaction, not saying it was an overreaction. It was a 100% tragic event, but we saw that big sell-off all the way down to 365 and you look or really I personally look and a bunch of traders out there look to capitalize 
on this overreaction, right? To see if we can start to fill the gap back up. And that's exactly what I personally did. And I know a bunch of other people did that as well when they capitalized on this move up in Boeing, right? And now, you know, we're going to look for this you know, next fill back up to about 415. And this is also, you know, what other, you know, longer term investors, for example, look for whenever there's an earnings miss, but the fundamentals of the company are still in sound in check, and the stock falls, longer term investors look to hop in those points as dip buys, right? This could potentially be not saying it is do your own research, right? This could potentially be a nice little dip buy for the longer term investor. This is what people look for. Dips from news earnings reports that could be overreactions to hop in and average down on their positions, right? That's just a little lesson that we can get here from Boeing stock and things like this, guys. They happen literally every single day in the stock market. Stocks gap down and then they slowly fill the gap back up. Not always do they fill the gap. Not always, guys. You know, more times than not, the stock does end up just selling off more. But, you know, there are instances where we gap down and we slowly start to fill back up. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of Boeing stock, ticker symbol BA. Now let's take a look at some other stocks that did very well today that I'm looking to potentially trade here over these next couple of days. So Apple, guys, we called this one out yesterday and it's looking like it's filling the gap from where we called it out at about 176, the old resistance, which is now a new support, back up to about 185. So this is a stock I'm watching very closely to potentially trade tomorrow. Another one that did very well today was YY. This one filled the gap from about $77 up to about $80. I called this one out this morning in the chat. I personally didn't trade it, but it ended up going according to plan, exactly how I ended up calling it out. I called it out, I believe, at about 77-ish dollars or something like that. And from there, we did end up filling the gap all the way back up to $80. So now tomorrow, I'm going to be waiting to see, are we going to hold 80 as a new support to slowly fill the gap back up to $85? Ticker symbol, YY. Very interested in seeing what's going to happen there. Let's take a look at some tech stocks, right? I said all of them did very well, at least the ones that I track. Amazon up $50 today, up about 3%. It's looking to test this resistance for a potential breakout there to the next resistance at about 1770. That could be a potential 100 point move there in Amazon. Netflix today up about $9, up about 2.6%. Looking for a potential break out of that 50S may there that resistance very strong resistance there google up about 33 dollars today guys up about three percent we actually did call out google in yesterday's video so wh whoever ended up trading google today congrats to you you did very very well up 33 dollars the perfect bounce on the 50 sma the perfect continuation of the uptrend that's what we're seeing and Microsoft, guys, up about 2% today. We're at that resistance at about 112. Looking for a potential breakout to test all-time highs. Or are these all-time highs? I'm pretty sure they are at about $116. Yep, they are all-time highs. So these are levels, guys, on the tech stocks that I'm watching very, very closely. And again, for those of you guys that want to see three stocks that I'm personally thinking about swing trading, go check out the video that I uploaded before this one today. You'll find value in it I guarantee you but that's it for today's video guys I'm gonna wrap it up here for everybody that did end up enjoying this video feel free to go down below hit that like button subscribe if you're new and drop a comment let me know what you guys ended up doing today I would love to know as always I appreciate all you guys watching for all the longtime viewers I appreciate you all so much if you're a new viewer, I appreciate you for staying this far as well. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great one. Peace out.